Now we'll start by taking us back. In September 1968, at a constitutional conference of the Bahama Islands held in London, England, the then Honorable Lyndon O. Pinley, Premier of the Bahamas, introduced the precept that he, his political colleagues in government, and the Bahamian people had set as a foundation for the development of our country. And what they had come up with was the principle that self-determination and orderly development is the way forward for the Bahamas. In the years that followed, that is in the 60s, leading into the 70s, we all came to understand that in order to attain self-determination and orderly development, we had to first accept and internalize into our psyche and uh, to personify in our daily lives the concept of Bahamians being first. And that's where you hear all Bahamians, FNMs even, talk about Bahamians first. Well, it started first in the PLP. Amen. Amen. Now, right off the bat, the PLP administration got it right. The adage Bahamian first became and still is one of the primary pillars upon which the Progressive Liberal Party exists. The personification of this nationalistic belief was the principal reason for me offering to come in frontline politics and becoming an armor bearer for the PLP. And as we already know, that led eventually to me becoming the member of parliament for Mount Moriah. Now in 2002, after the Bahamas had had a 10 year hiatus, the Bahamas returned to the blueprint once again that was established back in the 60s, and that is that of self-determination and orderly development. <coughs> Once again, in this Bahamas, Bahamians were first, and that was under the PLP administration led by Perry Christie. It is my considered opinion that in 2009, this can only be assured if we ensure the protection of our sovereignty and our national identity. It is with this belief that I now feel compelled to say to you here tonight that as a people, not just as PLPs, but as a people, we must once and for all shut down and dismantle the Grand Bahama Port Authority. Right now. Right now. And, yes. and we must have them repay to the Bahamian people yes. all of what they have yes. taken and continue to take from our people under the false pretenses of developing an industrial hub for the Bahamas. It is all a farce. It has been a farce from the beginning. It still is a farce today. To allow ourselves to continue to be bamboozled by the port beyond 2012 mm -hmm. will take the Bahamas down a pathway, in my view, of confirming what the FNM seems content on allowing to happen in this country. And that is they want to compromise our 41-year-old policy of self-determination. In Grand Baham, there are those who feel that under the powerful political hand of Stafford Sands, with the 1959 promulgation of the Hawksville um, Creek Act, that Freeport was the center of industry for the Bahamas with unbridled um, interference <coughs> by the central government. Now that might be so, but Sir Lyndon made it clear that such legislation was not to be seen as a license for lawlessness when it came to the protection of our environment or for the future generations, or for profiteering by undesirable people and entities in their selfish multinational interests that would lead to our people being treated as if they were simply disposable items. An excerpt from Sir Lyndon's Ben or Break speech is relevant today as it was 41 years ago. So true. And I want to read this, especially for those who might not have heard it. I'm sure some of you here did hear it. And so, take it as a reminder, a small part of it, and I'll raise my hand when I end. And I want, I'm not reading the whole of a speech, but this is a piece. Now, in congratulating Bahamas Oil on the opening of the refinery here in Grand Bahama, Sir Lyndon said this. Now, I, I, I got to take my glasses <coughs> off to read smaller print. That's not me. You, you got to take your glasses off to see. <laughs> There are many people in the Bahamas who are participants in and interested in the economic development of the Bahamas. Not all of them, however, are cognizant of or interested in the economic and social welfare of the Bahamian people. 
far too few acknowledge and fewer still accept the fact that development must be shaped to fit the human and social needs of the country where it takes place. Far too many are here, far too many here, adopt the attitude that they have certain guaranteed rights to make money, and that is all that it is about. Freeport had indeed been, had, had indeed been a miracle of economic development. It has indeed been a shining example of financial wizardry. What it lacks is humanity. What it needs is a social conscience. What it must have before too long is a soul. I have always been concerned about this lack of soul in Freeport, the absence of honest concern for the human and social needs of people. It is a fundamental part of my basic political philosophy that Bahamian people are more important than things, that Bahamian men are more important than machines. In this city, where regrettably almost anything goes, where promisingly some economic opportunities have come to Bahamians, Bahamians are nevertheless still victims of an unbending social order which, if it refuses to bend, must now be broken. It is abundantly clear that to developers in this area, Bahamian people do not matter. For instance, one set of developers have built a system of canals surrounding an old Bahamian community. Traditionally, that area had fresh water, which amply supplied local needs. But the canals have apparently burst the fresh water lenses, and the groundwater in their area is now sour. There is no way that the water lenses can be repaired. So, since ancient right, uh, water rights have been disturbed, pipe water should be supplied to the area. It should be supplied to the local public free of charge. And there should only be charge in the event of a house being connected to the main supply. Since the surrounding canals are dug through what was once a swash of sawgrass, and land had to be built up above the high water mark, the traditional community which now lies between the high sand ridge on the ocean front and now the new high land built between the canals is a pond whenever there is heavy rain. The most serious aspect of socio-economic life in Freeport is, appalling, is the appalling situation now revealing in housing. Freeport is a well-planned city. So well-planned, in fact, that it appears that it has intended to plan the Bahamian right out of it. <laughs> That's the words of Selinda. Now, not only was the PLP administration adhering to the orderly developmental principle as it relates to what we now know as sustainable development in the world today, it was determined to ensure that those who sought simply to profit on the backs of Bahamians would not be tolerated. I feel, ladies and gentlemen, the spirit running through my political veins. I feel endowed with the righteous stance of the father of our nation in the days when it appears that real men stood or fell for their convictions. I feel the position that I take today is the right one and that we in the PLP must return to that kind of forthrightness in politics. Grand Bahamians, if, you, if we were to allow the Port Authority to continue to rape the Bahamian people, mm. as, re as relentlessly as the Port Authority has done over the last 55 years, we will certainly be returning to what that unwelcome and distasteful social order that Salindans identified 41 years ago and stood so strongly against. Now, I'm not old enough to have experienced that, but those of you who are there, I can only imagine this was a town that apartheid and subjugation was rife. And along comes this little fellow. And he says, if you don't bend, I will break you. That is the kind of person that we need today. Ladies and gentlemen, I can never fill the shoes of Salinda. I believe I may be a small chip of his shoulder in the sense that I can state it the way it is, not afraid to do it. Now over these years, what the port did, for those of you who've been following the port and understands about it, what the port did is it, it stripped itself 
of five very essential parts of it.